Let's start by looking at what it means when Gaussian elimination or LU factorization completes. So here we have the algorithm for Gaussian elimination. And notice that the algorithm for LU factorization is identical. Now under what circumstances can this particular algorithm fail? Well, it can fail if we ever divide by zero. So if ever a diagonal element that's going to be used to divide into the elements below it in order to compute the multipliers, if that element is ever zero, and that doesn't mean that initially it has to be zero, it just means that eventually it can become zero, then this algorithm fails. But if a zero there is never encountered, then we know that this algorithm completes and therefore computes an LU factorization. Once we're done with that and we are confronted with the right-hand side, then we first execute a triangular solve with a unit lower triangular matrix. And notice that that only involves multiplication and subtraction. So there is no opportunity for that to fail. And finally, when we're done with that, we take the solution that comes out of solving with the lower triangular matrix, and we feed that vector into an upper triangular solve with the upper triangular matrix U. And notice again, we may end up dividing by zero, but notice that a zero can only appear on the diagonal if as part of LU factorization, a zero was encountered. The only zero that may or may not have been encountered is the very, very last entry in the upper triangular matrix. So the bottom line is, if LU factorization completes, and it completes with an upper triangular matrix that does not have zeros on the diagonal, then we know that we can take any right-hand side, run it through a forward and backwards substitution phase, and come up with a solution to the linear system AX equals B. So the question then becomes, is this a unique solution? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to argue this rather informally, and through a sequence of homework problems, you are going to make that argument much more formal. So let's start by assuming that we do that we perform an LU factorization, and the resulting U out of that factorization does not have zeros on its diagonal. Now, what that means is that you that this factorization, as well as the forward substitution and with the back substitution phases, all complete. And hence, we have a means for computing a solution to AX equals B. And the question is, is it unique? Well, let's assume AX equals B has two solutions, and it always helps to give them a name. So we're going to give these the name U and V. What do we know then? Well, we know that if we take U and we plug it into AX equals B, it solves the system. And we know that if we take V and we plug it into the system, it solves AX equals B. Therefore, if we look at a times the vector u minus v, we know that that distributes. And we know that each of these is equal to b. And therefore, we know that whatever this vector is, we can give it a name. Let's call it w. a times that vector w is equal to 0. So what we've now decided is that if ax equals b has two solutions, then we also know that ax equals 0 has at least one solution, and we're going to call that solution w. Now, if we can show that w is always equal to zero, then we know that ax equals b cannot have two solutions because u and v must be the same vector. So let's have a look and see how we do that. So we define w to be u minus v, and we think of ax equals zero, except that we're going to call the solution to that w, so a w has to be equal to zero. And then since we know that a has been factored into l times u, because the LU factorization completed successfully and u has no zeros on the diagonal, then we know that we can instead look at solving l times u times the vector w equal to zero. And then we can place some parentheses in convenient places. Now what does that mean? If we now call this here the vector z, then l times z must be equal to 0. And what we're going to show is that if l times z is equal to 0, then that vector z must itself be the 0 vector. And then what? Well, 
Then we look at u times w being equal to zero, namely that z vector that we just decided had to be equal to zero. And if we can show that that means that w must be equal to zero, then we know that the two solutions are really one and the same. So how do we do that? Well, let's start by looking at the fact that if LZ is equal to zero, then Z must be equal to zero. And here we're going to take advantage of the fact that L has to be a unit lower triangular matrix. So how does the argument informally go? Well, we know that this times that plus zeros times the rest of this must be equal to zero. Okay. And therefore we conclude that zeta zero must be equal to zero. And then we say, oh, but this times zeta zero plus one times zeta one must be equal to zero. But since we know that zeta zero is equal to zero, what that really means is that zeta one is equal to zero. And then we, through that argument, we can argue one by one that all of these elements must be equal to zero. Now in a homework, you're going to prove this by induction because the argument that we just made just screams induction at you. So, through this kind of argument, we can assert that z must be the zero vector. So then we know that u times w must be equal to zero. And what we want to show is that that means that w equal to zero. But remember that u has no zeros on the diagonal. We know that this last element, oops, that should be 1, times this last coefficient of w must be equal to zero. And from that, we conclude that this last coefficient is equal to zero. Then we know that this times that plus this times that must be equal to zero. But since this times that is zero, we can conclude that the next coefficient of w must be zero. And through this kind of argument, we can one by one determine that the coefficients of w must all be equal to zero. And then we conclude from that the fact that w is equal to zero and u minus v is equal to w means that u minus v is equal to zero, and therefore we can determine that the solution actually must be unique. And again, in a sequence of homework problems, you're going to make this much more formal. If you're given a square matrix A, and LU factorization completes with a matrix U that has no zero elements on its diagonal, then we have a methodology for determining a solution to AX equals B, regardless of what right-hand side B vector you're given. And what we have just argued is that that solution is actually unique. So the answer here is always.